There are numerous ways from the Bible to teach Muslims that Jesus is God. And one of those ways is to show you how one becomes a Christian in the first place. Now Christians say that Christianity is the way to be saved and Muslims say that Islam is the way to be saved and both religions have an entry point where you start becoming a Christian or a Muslim and Islam has that entry point and it's called the Shahada. Brothers and sisters who are considering reverting to Islam or taking what is known as the Shahada, which is the declaration of faith that I bear witness there is none worthy of worship besides Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger of Allah. In a nutshell, that declaration is made by tongue, it is believed, and it is uh, believed in the heart, and we act upon it. That makes you a Muslim. Well, the Shahada says that you have submitted to Allah in your heart, basically, right? And from then on, you, you follow the other four pillars and the, the Hadiths and the Quran, all that stuff, to be, to be a Muslim. But the entry point is the Shahada. Christians have an entry point as well to becoming a Christian. Throughout the Old Testament, there is a theme that runs through it. And it's a phrase about people who worship Yahweh. Here are some examples. Genesis chapter 4. Seth also had a son, and he named him Enosh. At that time, men began to call on the name of the Lord. So this verse is saying that in his household of Seth, people began to worship God. That's what that means, to call upon the name of the Lord it means to start worshiping Yahweh. Genesis chapter 12. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your descendants I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord, who had appeared to him. And he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel. And he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west of Ai on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. So we see Abram, later Abraham, worshiping God, calling on the name of the Lord. Joel chapter 2. And afterward I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So once again we see a verse from the Old Testament where it says to call on the name of Yahweh to be saved to worship the one true God. First Kings chapter 18. Then you call on the name of your God and I will call on the name of the Lord the God who answers by fire he is God. Then all the people said what you said is good. So this is Elijah on Mount Carmel, and he's having his showdown with the priest of Baal. And he says, I'm going to call on the name of the Lord, and we're going to see whose God is the real God. And of course, Yahweh is the real God. But Elijah said again that I'm going to call on the name of the Lord. That means to worship God, to serve God, to submit to the one true God, Yahweh. Now let's fast forward to the New Testament. And Muslims are saying, well, hey, that's the Old Testament. What about you said this is how people become a Christian. Why are you talking about all these Old Testament verses? Here's why. Peter on the day of Pentecost stands up and preaches. And in part of his sermon, he says this, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And in Peter's sermon, he equates what's going on at Pentecost to Joel chapter 2, the verse I just quoted, that in the end times God will pour out His Spirit on all flesh, and whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that's the same thing Peter is preaching. So how do we know that Peter is talking about Jesus and not the Father? Well, here's how we know. In that same sermon, Peter says this, Therefore let all Israel know with certainty that God has made Jesus, 
whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Peter says Jesus is Yahweh, the Lord. And yes, the Father and the Son are not the same person. This verse is showing you, demonstrating you, the Trinity. Yes, Father's God and Jesus is God in this verse. So, and other verses teach that the Holy Spirit is God. And the Christian church and the scriptures and the New Testament and the Old Testament has always said there is only one true God. So you put all that together, there's three persons and one being. And in this verse, Peter says Jesus is Yahweh. And earlier he said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of Jesus shall be saved. I want you to catch this because Peter is using an Old Testament verse that talked about calling on the name of the Lord, Yahweh, and he applies it to Jesus to tell you that Jesus is Yahweh. And the way for you to become a Christian is to call on the name of the Lord. That means to serve Jesus, to worship Jesus as your Lord that He is. He is the master of the universe. He owns the universe. He is the Lord. And until you submit to Jesus, you're not saved. Romans chapter 10. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So once again, Jesus is the Lord. Whosoever shall call upon the name of Jesus shall be saved. Once again, this is Paul, this time, applying that verse in the Old Testament about calling on the name of the Lord and saying that verse is about Jesus. So my dear Muslim friends, it's as plain as day that to become a Christian, you have to believe that Jesus is God. And I know that built into your religion is this sin called shirk and shirk is nothing more than a boogeyman to keep you from the truth that's what shirk is it's built into islam my dear muslim friends because islam says this is the only sin that can never be forgiven and what it is is becoming a christian that's what shirk is is basically believing that jesus is lord and so i see the conundrum you're in i see the hard time that you're in if you really want to be saved and your religion says the one thing you can't do is say Jesus is Lord and the Bible is saying the only thing that you can do to say to be saved is to say that Jesus is Lord so which one is correct do you trust the Bible the New Testament written by people who knew Jesus and people who knew the ones that knew Jesus. That's where the, the New Testament comes from. It's eyewitness testimony. Or do you trust a guy that came 600 years after Jesus, who married a child, consummated a marriage with a child, who had uh, women in bondage, sold people into bondage? Would you trust that guy? Or would you trust Jesus? It's pretty simple. Jesus says... The, he is the Lord in Mark chapter 2. And the disciple said that you must call upon Jesus' name because he is God. That means to worship him, to serve him, to submit to him. And once you do that, my dear Muslim friends, if you do that today, you become a new creature. The Holy Spirit comes to live on the inside of you and you stay submitted to Jesus by faith. And so it's not like Muslims say, you repeat, repeat some silly prayer and you can go on sinning. No, that's not what Christianity teaches. When you call upon the name of the Lord, that means you are the servant to the Master. And Jesus is the Master. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is the one that sits on God's kingdom. In actuality, my dear Muslim friends, Jesus is your King but you're either rebelling against the king or you're a subject of the king. 
and those who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Those are Jesus' subjects, and those who don't are rebelling against the one true King, Jesus. And He died on a cross to serve you, to, to wash you clean from your sin, and He rose from the dead. That's the gospel message. And when you trust in Him, believe in Him, call upon His name to start serving Him and worshiping Him as your God, you'll have salvation. My dear Muslim friends, if you do that today, if you call upon the name of the Lord, you will never regret it.